A ball is thrown vertically upwards from the top of a building of height 25 meters with a velocity of 12 meters per second. On its way down, the ball passes a door which has a height of 1.9 meters and then strikes the ground as shown in the diagram. Okay, so everything's shown pretty nicely over here. We've got a ball that gets thrown upwards at 12 meters per second and then it comes down and hits the ground. The first question says, define the term free Fall. Well, what is free fall? So when you have an object, let's say for example over here, and it's on its way down, if you had to do a free body diagram, the only force acting on that ball would be gravity. If you had to do a free body diagram on the object over there, the only force acting on it would be gravity. If you had to do a free body diagram over there, guess what? Only force acting on it would be gravity gravity. So what is free fall? Free fall is when the only force acting on the object, or it's an object that is moving under the influence of gravity only. And so here we have it from the memo. It says it's the motion under the influence of gravity, or you could have said weight, or you could have said gravitational force only. Okay, and then you could have also said motion in which the only force acting is gravity. So there's a couple of different ways you could say it. So whatever suits you best, but you get the idea of what it is. The next question, this one over here says, calculate the time taken for the ball to reach its maximum height. So we're definitely going to have to use our equations of motion. Now, they're only talking about, they said the time taken for the ball to reach its maximum height. So we're only going to look from here up to there, okay? So if we just had to draw that out, you've got an, a ball going like that. So this would be at your initial position and this would be your final position. We're not gonna say this is the final position. Your initial and final are based upon where you are looking at that particular point of the question. So we know that when the, when the ball reaches this position over here, it will momentarily, for a small moment of time, it will have a zero velocity. It will reach a zero velocity, and then it will begin falling again, okay? So at this position here, we will say that the velocity is zero, and then over here, we know that the initial velocity was 12. And what else do we know? We know the acceleration. Remember that when an object is under free fall, the acceleration is always 9.8 meters per second to the negative two down. No matter what, guys, even when the object is over here, the acceleration is still acting downwards, okay? When it's over here, over here, over here, it doesn't matter. So we do know the value of um, A, and they want us to calculate the time. So this would be the best formula to use. So let's go write that down. Vf equals to Vi plus A delta t. You can choose up or down as positive. I'm gonna choose upwards as positive. And so we're gonna say zero equals 12 plus. Now, because we're choosing um, up as positive, but acceleration is always 9.8 down, you must make that a negative and then delta t. Okay, if you ever calculate delta t and you get a negative answer, you have made a mistake. You can never get a negative answer for time. Okay, and so if we had to go work this out, let's take the let's take this over to the other side, so it will end up becoming a positive. And then to get delta t alone, you can just say twelve over nine point eight, which is equal to one point two two seconds. One point two two seconds. This question says, velocity with which the ball strikes the ground. Okay, now you have got multiple options. You could go from here to here, or you could go from the very beginning to here. I like to do it that way, but a lot of learners, they like to first do this part and then this part. But what I do is I just go straight from here to here. So this is my initial condition, and this is my final condition. Now, notice that in the first question, I chose upwards as positive. That doesn't mean I have to choose upwards as positive for every single question. You can if you want to, but 
What I like to do, because this one's more going more of a in a downwards direction, I'm actually going to choose downwards as positive this time. But you don't have to do it that way. Okay, so let's see what we have. We have the initial velocity. We want to calculate the final velocity. We have got the displacement. It'll be 25. Now, some of you are like, yeah, but Kevin, what about this part over here? Don't we have to add that in? But then you're not thinking carefully about what does displacement actually mean? And I see this problem many times. So remember that these values are not distances, they are displacement. So remember that if you and your family go driving on a road trip like this, like this, like this, then to calculate the displacement, you simply look at how far is it from here to here in a straight line. So you just measure that distance over there. Okay, you don't look at the entire pathway that is traveled. That is called distance, but we're not looking at that. We're looking at displacement, which is the distance, which makes sounds like I'm contradicting myself, but it's only the distance from here to here in a straight line. That is what displacement is. So if this ball goes like this and boo -doo -boo -doo -doo -doo, goes like that and ends up over here, well, the displacement is literally from the starting position, which is here, to the ending position as a straight line. And that is why I said 25. Okay, so don't confuse displacement and distance. So we have got the displacement. So, and then what do they want? The veloc the final velocity. So the best formula would actually be this one now. Now some of you might wanna use Y, it doesn't matter, it's the same thing. They don't mind on the memos either. Um, so we're looking for this. We've got the initial. We've always got acceleration because it's always 9.8 down. And we've got the displacement. So let's go write down our formula. For this one, I'll choose down as positive. But you're more than welcome to keep up as positive. It doesn't matter. But just don't feel that you have to choose one direction for the whole question. Okay, so the initial velocity is uh, 12, but it's negative 12 because it's going up, but we've chosen down as positive for this one. For my acceleration, I'll keep that as a positive because we've chosen down as positive and acceleration is always down as positive. Okay, and then what else? Oh, the displacement. Now here's where learners often make mistakes. Displacement can have a negative or a positive. So all you do is the, the following. You look at your starting level. So this is your start level and this is your ending level, or your finishing position, or your final, let's rather call it final, that sounds better. Now, is your, st is your final position above or below? Well, your final position is below. So even though the ball first went up like this, overall, did it end up below or above? It ended up below the starting position, so it ended up going down overall. So because we chose down is positive and the object does end up going down overall, we don't worry about the fact that it first went up, we're just looking at the starting and the ending, then we can say the displacement is positive 25 because we chose down as positive and the object did end up going down. Okay, and so now we can just go type all of this in. Okay, you should get 634. I've got something very interesting I wanna to explain to you guys for those of you that chose upwards as positive, because you would still get a positive answer. And so you might think, oh, so is the object going up? Um, I'll explain that to you now. It's something to do with this, uh, this formula specifically. So, okay, so if we had to go take the square root of 634, then we get 25.18 meters per second, and we'll say down. Okay, let me now explain for the learners that chose up as positive, which is nothing wrong with that. But the problem is you're also gonna get a positive answer. Then you're gonna maybe think your answer means up. So let's try it. It's one of the weird parts of vertical projectile motion. So now we're choosing upwards as positive. So we're gonna go uh, VF squared equals to the initial, which is 12. Now it's a positive 12 because we are going up. Plus uh, acceleration is now negative and displacement is now negative. Why? Because we chose upwards as positive, but the object is ending below its starting position. Now, if you had to go work this all out, you're gonna get exactly, 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 exactly 
the same answer. Now you might say, oh, so I chose upwards as positive, but now I'm getting a positive answer. So does that mean up? And this is the one formula that sort of contradicts what we've learned. The reason is, is that this formula can never give you a negative answer. Because this part's always going to be positive, and these two are always going to go together. Okay, um, you see how here they were both positive, here they were both negative. So you're always going to get a positive answer for this one. So you just have to rather look at the diagram when giving your answer like that. Okay, that's quite a weird one. It doesn't fit the normal uh, scenario what we've been taught. If you choose up as positive and you get a positive answer, that means up. Um, you have to look at the context of the question. Now, you can get different answers. So we got 25.18. But on the memo, I'll go have a nice look for you now. But if you were a student that used a slightly different technique, on the memo, there's literally like nine or 10 methods you could have used for the first question. And that would have given you a slightly different answer over here, which would affect this answer over here. So you were allowed to get anywhere between 25.03 all the way up to 25.59. If you got anywhere between there, then you're fine. This question says, what is the time that it took the ball? So what is the time for the, from, from the top of the door? Wait, what? Time it took the ball to move from the top of the door to the ground. Oh, okay. So from here to here, how long was that time? Okay. Different ways of doing this. Um, I immediately think, yeah, I think I've got an idea of what I want to do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to see how long does it take, uh, how long does it take the ball to go from the starting position up to here? Okay, so I'll call this uh, top of door, and then this will be ground. So my first step is how long from the start to top of door. Okay, so I'm never going to look at this position. You can if you want to, but I just keep it easy for myself and I just go from the starting position um, because I know that I don't have to work out distance. I only ever have to use displacement. All right, so if I just want to quickly work out this value over here, this, this displacement, well, that would be 25 minus 1.9 and that's going to give us 23.1 meters. Yep. So I can then work out the time and the formula that I'll use, I've, okay, I've got the initial velocity. I don't have the final velocity, so I'm not going to use anything with final velocity. Um, I'm talking about final velocity over there. So I'm going to use this one. Okay. So we're going to go delta x equals to v initial delta t plus a half um, a delta t squared. So, okay. And I will choose down as positive. Okay, so if that's my starting position, now my ending position is over here, so I'm ending below. Because I chose down as positive and I'm ending below, then this would be a positive value. So I'll say 23.1 because I'm just going from there to there. I'm not going all the way down. And my initial velocity will be negative 12 because I chose down as positive, but the ball initially goes up. Now, the amount of time, that's what I'm trying to calculate. Gravity will be positive 9.8 because I chose down as positive. Gravity's going down. And then delta t squared. So now we've got a trinomial. So what I'll do is I'll take this over to the right. And so we have a zero over here. I'm going to bring this parameter to the front. So it's going to be 4.9 because that's half of 9.8. 4.9 delta t squared minus 12 delta t minus 23.1. Now, you're just going to use your quadratic formula where this will be your a value, here's your b, here's your c. And so if you had to work this out, you would end up with your time as, well, you'll get two answers. You'll get 3.72 seconds or then you get a negative. Now, of course, we can't have a negative, but we'll write it down anyways. Okay, and then just say na for that one. All right, so now it means, what, that's, what that means is that to go all the way from there 
to there, it takes 3.72 seconds. Now I'm gonna see how long does it take to go all the way to the ground, and then I can just minus those two values, and that'll give us how long did it take to go from the top of the door to the ground. So now my starting position is still at the same place, but now my final position is at the ground. Okay, I'm gonna use the same formula. Uh, let's say here, number two, how long from start to ground. So that's gonna be the same formula. I'll still choose down as positive. And so I'm ending below my starting position, so that's perfect because I'm choosing down as positive, so that'll just be 25 because I'm going 25 meters down. Um, okay, negative 12 once again, delta T, we don't know. You might say, Kevin, isn't delta T 3.72? We just calculated that. No, that would be from the starting position to the top of the door, but now we're doing it all the way to the final position. Gravity will be positive and then delta T squared. So once again, we're gonna go and get a trinomial now. So zero equals to 4.9 delta T squared minus 12 delta T uh, minus 25 equals to zero. Let's just write that there. Okay, so once again, go use your quadratic formula and you would get an answer of 3.79 seconds or negative 1.34. Now, of course, we can't have this one, so we'll just say NA. Okay, okay, so it takes 3.72 seconds to go to there, and then it takes three, whoops, from here, 3.79 seconds to go to there. So by minusing those two, by saying 3.79 minus 3.72, that'll give you 0 0.07 seconds. And remember that, so we said the answer was this, but depending on different methods and answers you got in the previous questions, I did see on the memo, this memo was actually quite uh, thorough in they showed so many different ways. There was also like 0, 0,08 for example, that's also going to be fine. Okay, so let's move on to this question now. It says, draw a velocity time graph for the motion of the ball from the moment it is released or thrown upwards until it hits the ground, use the ground as the reference. Okay, so with a velocity time graph, we um, we do that, and then we've got time on the x-axis measured in seconds, and then we've got velocity on the y-axis measured in meters per second. All right, now it says, um, clearly indicate the following, the velocity with which the ball is thrown upwards the time taken to reach its maximum height, which we said over there, and then the velocity with which it strikes the ground, and we got that over there. Okay, I'm gonna show you two different graphs. If you're a student that chose upwards as positive. Okay, so the first velocity is 12. Now look how easy this is. Is it 12 up or 12 down? Well, that's 12 up. So if you chose upwards as positive, you'll put a 12 over there. Okay, so you'll put it at 12. Oh, that's not, doesn't look nice. Let's put the velocity like that. And let's put 12. Okay, in a different color, I'll show you what the graph would look like if you chose down as positive. So if you chose down as positive, then your 12 would be a negative. So you'd put a negative 12. Okay, now the next thing they said is the time taken to reach its maximum height. Well, we know that that time was 1.22. So at 1.22, then what was the velocity at the maximum height? What is the velocity of the object when it reaches its maximum height? Well, the velocity there is zero. So we're gonna have something like this on our graph at 1.22 seconds, a velocity of zero. That'll be the same on this graph as well. Okay, 1.22 seconds. The next one is, what is the velocity when it strikes the ground? Well, that was 25.18. But remember that now it's going 25.18 and it's going down. But on this graph, you chose upwards as positive, so that's gonna be a negative 25.18. So negative 25.18. Um, so your graph would look something like that over there. It's always gonna be a straight line actually, like that, okay? And then, 
if you chose down as positive, well then at this point here it is going down, so that's going to be a positive value. So positive 25.18, so that would be somewhere there. And so that's what the two graphs would look like. Now they didn't say the time for that part, so we don't have to worry about that. And that's it.